Roy, I want to welcome you to the show and uh, really thank you for getting in touch with me because this is a pretty exciting development you've brought around here um, with the concept of uh, really bringing distance learning and in person to person, face to face learning closer together than I think it's ever been done before with um, your new uh, kind of web based in person CPR training. Well, thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate you having me on your show. And um, yeah, it is exciting. It's been a long time in the works. And um, I was telling somebody the other day, and, and this isn't to minimize all the hard work that my wife and other women have, but it's kind of like giving birth, you know, as close as I can relate to it as, as a man. Um, yeah, careful. I don't want to get yeah. either of us in trouble. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it has no resemblance whatsoever, but it, it's been exciting to see this thing come to life. And yeah, we're really excited about it here. So before we get into talking about what you're exactly doing, because I think people are curious or seeing if you're watching the video, you're look, looking in the background and seeing uh, these uh, looks like boxes with heads on them. So what are we doing here? But um, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your background um, and, and, and what your um, experiences are, how you kind of got into this process. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, thanks for asking. So I, I got my first flavor for medicine when I joined the military back in 1987, 88. And I became a combat medic, um, and that was my taste of emergency medicine. When I came out of that, I um, went right to Davenport University, um, where I became a, a licensed paramedic after graduating from that program and worked on the street as a paramedic for years, and then eased into the education realm, and then um, basically taught in the classroom, CPR, ACLS, ITLS, for uh, BTLS back then, but ITLS now um, for a while, and stayed in the education community and then saw there was a private training organization opportunity and my family was growing and that's when I launched into my first bricks and mortar training company as an American Heart Medic First Aid Instructor Trainer. Um, when I was working for the ambulance company, I was a, back then it was called a CTC manager, but a training center manager um, and an affiliate of the American Heart Association. Um, still keep licensed as a paramedic and then uh, back in 2002, um, saw that technology was finally catching up with scalability of wanting to educate. E-learning was still in its, um, um, not even really born at that point. It was still in a concept mode, I think. But if it, to put it in perspective, in 2002, Adobe had not yet acquired Flash. Um, yep. And Google, wow. was, Google was only three years old. So, you know, so that kind of puts things, um, time travels so fast. But... Um, what we saw was that our concept of e-learning, where we wanted to bring a bricks and mortar training experience for CPR and first aid training, really couldn't be fulfilled quite yet because people didn't have broadband high-speed internet. So it was a little slow moving for a while, but then obviously that caught on quickly. Flash got much better. YouTube was born. And so suddenly we had platforms to be able to distribute education to places that otherwise we're not able to get it. And so since 2002, we had the opportunity to offer all of our trainings online for free unless people needed to be certified, and then we just charge for the certification. But the breakdown was when people were um, required to have more than an awareness level, and that's, that's where things got juicy for us. I mean, we had to start thinking about how do we connect them with mannequin practice. But that is kind of where I came from, from an education background, and how this all came to be eventually in 2014. It's amazing, uh, you know, when you think about it, uh, this has been an ongoing conundrum for a lot of people out there. Um, how do we become certified in CPR uh, when, our, when our employer requires us to have that person-to-person, -person, face face-to-face training, but to square away the time needed for an in-person class? Um, the American Heart Association's help with some of that by having an online component of the course mm -hmm. followed up by a, a, some kind of an in-person skill session that could be, you know, maybe a half an hour long, especially for a recertification situation. Um, but now you've kind of kind of bridged that gap and I'm curious about um, how you thought of it because it's so obvious to me now that I've seen what you've done that this in-person video conferencing version of um, an education with a one-time use mannequin. Yeah, well that's, you're, you've nailed it on several fronts. Um, sometimes I think things can be so simple they're right in front of our eyes most of the time and we just are looking too hard maybe or you know, we're a little bit myopic, but 
So the whole concept came, you know, back in, uh, well, about almost six years ago, we started an affiliate trainer program because we knew that there were people who needed to couple the awareness level or the cognitive online training with an actual tactile testing with the mannequin. Uh, and the only way that we had to do that at that time was by trying to affiliate with certified credentialed instructors who would recognize our part one and then complete the hands-on skills evaluation. But I think the feedback that we got from most of our healthcare professionals was, you're not really making this better for me. I mean, I, you know, it is a little bit because I was going to miss my class and then I wasn't going to be able to work. But in the big scheme of things, I still have to schedule another meeting. I still have to leave my house. I still have to pay an additional fee. I still have to, you know, kind of jockey things around. And then what if the weather goes bad or what if the person doesn't show? And so the efficiency of a 100% efficient self-paced education broke down. And I think that unless you're in a hospital where you have voice-assisted mannequins in a kiosk setting, where you just walk into a desk and there it is already set up and you just kind of make that part of your day-to-day -day operations, that's why maybe blended CPR has been a slow adoption. You know, I mean, you know as an instructor and, and I know from being in the industry, we just haven't gotten super excited about blended CPR. We get excited a little bit because the classroom can be done at their own pace, but it's that mechanical piece where it breaks down. And so I think what we saw was that people that, and when I say people, I mean professionals who knew they needed to be certified to work, whatever that was, whether that's healthcare related or general workplace related, they knew they were required to have a hands-on component, but they would sometimes bend the rules because they just couldn't get into a classroom. Sumo, the single-use mannequin option, has brought the expense that is usually looked at when someone is thinking about buying the actual professional level mannequin systems and reduce the cost to where it's no more than a traditional classroom together with the online. So now a person is looking at paying the same fee they would if they had to go to a, you know, a traditional bricks and mortar classroom and in reality after they click yes yeah, send me my kit they pick a date on the calendar and suddenly the, the friendly postman pulls up, drops their gift at their front door. They stay in their bunny slippers with their favorite beverage of choice, and they, they go face to face. And so they, they're not losing the personal touch. We have more control over their experience. I call it the Disney Starbucks experience because we want them to understand CPR is CPR, but what was the service and what was the education? And were they treated with the respect that they needed? Uh, um, we couldn't control that before in the blended realm. Now, thanks to Sumo, we can control it from start to finish. And we can be more selective of those instructors who play a part in that. We really are looking for personality uh, as well as credentials to be able to teach well. So describe the Sumo mannequin that you've put together here, this, this single-use mannequin option. Um, it, you, you ship them the box, and then they somehow utilize the box as part of the mannequin uh, in process as they did, you know, open the box up and have their materials there? Yeah, sure. So I kind of put some of this back here so that you know, viewers could maybe take a little peek. It's a little bit hard to see here, and I don't want to move around a ton, but... So the, the whole concept, you know, and believe me, my staff here at Pro Trainings, um, I think they, you know, it reminded me of the mad scientist that was allowed out of his room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we literally um, invested time going around and purposely thinking, no pun intended here, outside the box. I mean, we really wanted to say to ourselves, well, much like in the back of an ambulance when your equipment fails. And I think that's what the EMS brings to entrepreneurship is we have a job to do. It's a critical situation and the orthodoxy is breaking down. So if we have that problem ahead of us, do we just give up or do we begin thinking differently about what's always available? And quite honestly, I just started, well, you wouldn't even know where I started with the concept because it was pretty heinous. But I mean, it was so simple when it first began that this seems like a deluxe version but the whole concept was, why not a box? Number one, it's biodegradable. Number two, the box in and of itself may not be able to do everything that it needs to do, 
but what if we can make it do what it needs to do? And so that's when our engineering team, and we've got, we've got a bunch of people here, lots of smart people. This was not just me. This was um, the collaboration of um, instructor trainers, EMTs, paramedics, um, programmers, designers, user experience people, um, sales professionals, marketing professionals, where we came together and said, these are the materials that we can find that keeps the cost down. But here's the skills that it has to be able to perform. So though it's made of simple materials, it's not simply made. So we have an airway that's patent with a head tilt chin lift. We have an airway that when you actually breathe into it, you can see chest rise and fall. We have um, a pneumatic device in there that gives resistance so that there is an ability to actually do a two-inch compression with rebound back to a neutral position instead of just crushing the box. One of our team members here is six foot five and about 380 pounds who helped us develop to make sure that the first time you did 100 compressions on this thing, it didn't blow out and you had a flat box instead of a real box. Um, could we actually get a baby size? You know, we know with the adult size, you can double up on a child and an adult, but how are we going to be able to get a baby where you could do a brachial artery check and, you know, the back blows, the chest thrust, um, to be able to get breath in so you could see chest rise and fall. Some of the, uh, you know, the AED, did the AED really have to function like an AED or did it have to be able to go through the functions of an AED with the student hearing all of the prompts? You know, so when you look at the automated external defibrillator, it's just like most of the trainers. In fact, there's a Red Cross trainer that looks similar to this. But, you know, do you, you have to be able to turn the thing on. You have to have repositional pads that peel off. These are just for prototype at this point. But normally these peel off just like they would in a trainer, and then they stick on the patient in the appropriate areas, you know, with a similar diagram as you can see there, so that they know where the proper placement is. And then we prompt them. They'll hear the sound come over their video conference, you know, um, do not touch patient analyzing rhythm, all of the different things that, that a normal AED trainer would do. So even though the mannequin is constructed simply, we had to do that so that we would not burden the end user with an expense that they really don't have to spend. You know, if you're starting to get around $180 for a mannequin that's built to be able to train 150 to 300 people before it even has any repair problems, uh, that's not what a single user needs. The single user needs something that's economical but works as well as a professional level mannequin. And we believe with testing and with some prototype testing and actually getting it in the hands of all kinds of professionals, we may have found that. So it's pretty exciting. It is exciting. Now, and, you know, I have to ask the question, what's been the response? This is brand new. Um, have you heard from organizations out there that they are indeed going to accept this as in-person training, as face-to-face -face training, and, and, and the certificate you give will be uh, a valid AHA certificate? So, the, so we're a private organization and have always offered our own certification for CPR. Okay. So we, we don't foresee that we're going to be up against any more problems than we already have faced in the last 10 years of being public and, and actually going to state departments and associations and um, submitting all of our credentials and paperwork and systems and quality assurance checks for full acceptance as an equivalency to another national curriculum. So um, we're already an international company. We service, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to be ambiguous, but a lot of people we, we certify every year, um, both here in the United States, and we also have a sister company, ProTrainings.eu, which is in the UK, and that services more of our European, Spain, um, UK, greater UK area. Um, and we have great acceptance. We go through all of the same hoops as any other national or international company should that adheres to the American Heart Association recommendations or the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation recommendations. We've always touted that if they do it 100% online, it's good training and it'll teach them how to save a life but it's not accredited CPR certification. To do that, the international guidelines still state that there needs to be a hands-on component. This is the hands-on component that now ideally is no different than if a person was going to a voice-assisted mannequin that did not require an instructor to be present 
but needed to gauge if they could do all of the skills appropriately. We believe here that um, this is the hands-on component that has been meeting the same need that most curriculums need to follow. And because there is a live, and you could say in person, as much as we're in person, you're calling right. out to me and I'm directly responding. Um, if I were to scratch my head, you would know that I scratched my head. If I were to take a breath, you know I took a breath. So, I mean, is it in person? I feel like this interview is in person. It's just yeah. that we're leveraging technology so that we don't physically have to spend needless money to drive to your location or fly to your location. Or, you know, um, we've got uh, – here's an example, Jamie. We have students that are from two different extremes. They could be in Los Angeles and be five miles away from a skill evaluator, but it takes them an hour and a half to get there one way because they left at the wrong time of day. Yeah. We also have um, nurses and professionals and, and general workplace OSHA required people that live in a bowl in gorgeous Alaska. I had a story from a gal who was a nurse. She historically, over the last 20 years of nursing, every two years had to book a flight and a hotel stay just to renew her CPR. She'll never have to do that again because, you know, now we come to her and she's got internet access. That just eliminates a ton of problems. On the education side, they still are able to benefit until they actually do the skill evaluation where they're actually on a half hour to an hour time frame. They can go back and rewind the education as much as they want. So I, I really believe they're going to be much better prepared when it's time to actually do the skill evaluation than if it was in a short-term memory loss situation where it's all in one sitting. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the tests that we've done, the prototype testing, the research and design, and then our actual, what I would call pre-launch, where we were actually offering it on a selected basis to different people on a controlled basis to actually see how they were doing, was there problems, was it sufficient, are they able to show the skills, um, we have about a 95% success rate with, with not, the, we only had one comment um, of a person that was negative towards it. So out of all of the research that we did, we only had one negative comment. So that we felt comfortable with that, um, that if we could scrutinize it with some very, very professional people and, you know, 99 times out of 100, they were happy, it's time to launch it. Yeah, I think so. So is it live now? I mean, is this something that people can go out and find? and It utilize? is. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, it launched Friday, this past Friday. Um, it went public at around, uh, I think, 6 a.m. And uh, it's out at blendedcpr.com. So it is one of our sister sites. Um, but blendedcpr.com has many more details about how Sumo works, the single-use mannequin option. Um, yeah, so... If anybody has any interest in just examining it, obviously they can go out, they can call, they can ask questions. Um, we're really looking for feedback. You know, I, you've been in the industry a long time. Um, it's too bad I couldn't have sent you a kit ahead of time, but um, we're looking for that, you know, some really hardcore feedback because if it's not working, which, you know, we wouldn't launch it if it wasn't working, but if the thought is out there in the healthcare industry that it's not working, then from an ethical stance, we should stop, right? If it's not training people how to rescue and save a life, then we're actually doing more harm than good. But the feedback that we're getting is, you've given me my life back. It's not costing me an arm and a leg to do so. And now I can practice more often because I have my own personal mannequin kit. Um, well, then we're doing good in the world and we actually might be saving lives. I, I think so, and I'm excited about that. So that's blendedcpr.com, mm -hmm. and uh, folks can find out more about it over there. You have more information and contact you if they have any questions directly. But, uh, you know, I want to thank you very much, Roy, for reaching out to me about this. This is, ki this is kind of the most exciting thing that's happened in CPR training, I think, since the first time they uh, updated the, the guidelines, however many versions of five years ago there are yeah. um you know this is this is exciting and i think this is going to really change the paradigm for what cpr training is going to be for a lot of people i, I live in a rural area uh i'm forever doing one-on-one -on -one trainings here at my house because people miss the the one training that that two-month period their hospital offered and they had to recertify um you know that's 
this this gives them an even better option for scheduling around their schedule and working around their situation. Um, um, you know, and I, off, I do it a lot of times just because I feel like I'm obligated to help out in the community and make sure people are trained, but sure. heck, I'm going to send them your way. And, and <laughs> um, this, this saves me time and, and energy and, and gives them an even better option, I think, in many cases for, for doing this. So thanks a lot. And um, we'll have to make sure we follow up. And if you have anything else new coming out, uh, you know, you want to talk about this again, please reach out to me in the future. Well, I tell you what, I want to, I'm going to send you a gift. At, you'll be receiving it in a few days, but this one's yours. It'll be coming in the mail. Have fun with it, and we'll follow up down the road and see what you think of it. Excellent. I can't wait to get it. That's All right. fantastic. Hey, it's been an honor to be on your show. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work out there. Thank you.